Howdy YouTube. Welcome to another quick video by the Happy Woodworker. Uh, today I'm working on another project and I am doing a setup on my router to cut for biscuits. And instead of using a biscuit joiner, we are using a slot cutting bit, uh, which looks like this. Uh, it is a 532nd slot cutting bit. And we're going to put that into our router, and I thought this would be a good chance to do a router setup video. Um, so if you've never used one of these before, um, my router has a little drop down piece that will raise and lower the router up, like so. Hopefully the camera picks that up. Uh, so we're going to raise this up where it's accessible. And you are going to make sure that you have this already unlocked. You're going to use a wrench for this. Uh, on my router, there is a lock button around the back side, down inside. I don't know if I can get the camera to pick that up or not. Uh, if I come over here, and I come right down under the bottom, if you guys can see my thumb there, that's my lock button. So I have to press and hold that while I use the wrench to tighten this. Uh, and this is what's going to hold your bit in place. So I'm going to get that started. And hopefully my arms won't be in the way too much, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that. So I'm going to turn until it locks. I'll get there eventually. Actually, I think I'm just... Continuing on on setting up your router table to use, uh, what we're doing here is installing a slot cutting bit. And this is a brand new slot cutting bit. I haven't used this one before. So uh, we're going to find out how it works, if this bearing is too big or not. Uh, so I've got some adjustments to make. Uh, when you install this into your machine, your machine should have a collet. Uh, my machine takes quarter inch and half inch uh, shanks. Router bits come in a half an inch or quarter inch shank. Uh, you're going to install this. You don't want to have this all the way up. Uh, you generally want to have just a little bit of a gap um, where you're going to install this. So uh, that's a useful tip one. So we'll put that collet in. Uh, I was demonstrating earlier that there's a lock button under here that you have to press. Uh, and I'm going to start to tighten this down just a little before I even put my bit in. There we go, because I want to be able to stand that up a little bit. Well, looks like I'm going to have to get some more on it. Put the wrench on, give it a little turn, and then let's set this where I want this. Uh, about right there. I think that'll stay. And tighten this down. And you don't have to strong arm this, but you do want to have it tight. I mean, let's face it, you don't want something that spins at 26,000 RPMs coming off on you. That would not be pleasant. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is lower this down as soon as I get this to drop in. And we are going to put in a shield around this. You want the largest shield possible that you can get in here for support. Uh, without interfering with the bit. Uh, we want to leave some room for dust collection and things to come down through uh, and I don't want to have a bigger shield under here that's going to jam anything. So I've got my depth set where I want it. So I'm going to lock down my router. Underneath my router uh, there is a handle that will lock this into place and prevent it from moving or vibrating up and down or anything. I'm going to give it a little shake make sure that's nice and tight. So that's where that belongs. Uh, next up, for my biscuits, or for your project or whatever you're working on, you need to adjust your fence and have that where you need it. Um, since I'm turning this into a separate video that's not just for my current woodworking project, I'm not going to go into that, because uh, this is going to be a quick little bit on how to set up your router table in addition to the bread box project I'm currently working. So I thought I'd do two videos in one. Um, 
but I think that's the, the, the biggest majority of that. And also one other thing before I forget, you want to make sure that these are tight, particularly if you have a new bit, because I just about guarantee you that's not tight. So I'm going to check that before I run this router bit. Um, if it's not tight, it could come loose on you, and if something comes loose on you that's spinning at 26,000 RPMs, can you say injury? Uh, again, I always say, ask yourself how this tool is going to hurt you before you use it, no matter what it is, power tool, hand tool, um, always ask, how is this tool going to hurt me? And then double check everything. Uh, for those of you who have never used bits, router bits like this before, or used router bits at all, uh, you have the bit, you have a bearing, my wood will cut in. In this case, I'm cutting straight into the bit. Uh, if you were just cutting like a, a dado slot and you were using a router bit to do that, you would come in from the side uh, and run it through, but it would ride up against this bearing and that's as far as it will allow it to cut in. Uh, I hope that makes sense as well. You can get bits with bearings, bits without bearings, uh, so you have to decide what you're using for your project. Uh, and at some point I will do a demonstration video on different types of router bits, what they do, how to use them. Um, but for today, that is installing a bit in your router table. If you have a portable router, it is almost the exact same process. You'll have a little lock nut that holds uh, that shaft in place. You have to put a wrench on it, take it loose, tighten it back up. Uh, and so your handheld router is done the exact same well, way. But I'll probably... So I hope everybody has enjoyed this. Uh, and now I'm going to continue on with my bread box project. So hope you guys all tune into that. Thanks and happy woodworking.